Heavenly Father God, who saved us, we thank you. We, we were still sinners, you saved us, and you still love us, and you're strengthening us, and giving us lessons, and leading us to your righteousness. We thank you. The pandemic is still going around, and it's stopping us to freely have fellowship. But through this difficult time, please give us um, more lessons. And just as the word, it says, it is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I may learn your statutes. We like to have that um, deeply engraved in our hearts. Please give the mother's understanding and give them strength and comforts so they know where they should go and please help us so that we can testify that we did not live a life of a shame um, through today's fellowship give us lesson and help us to share much fellowship we give you thanks and in thanks we pray in your name amen let's go to hebrews chapter 11 hebrews 11 verses 39 and 40 hebrews 11 verses 39 and 40 I'll read. And all these, having obtained a good testimony through faith, did not receive the promise. God having provided something better for us, that they should not be made perfect apart from us. We hoped this pandemic to be um, over after a while but um, it's still around us even after a year time among the mothers who are here today uh, some of you I think are already graduated from caring your little children I heard that this fellowship is for the mothers of young babies to children up to the age of young um, junior in primary school yeah I there are some sisters in Dortmund Church uh, who don't belong to this group but maybe because you are leaders but yeah anyways it's good to see the sisters so the time now is a difficult time for everybody but I think it's, it's especially more um, harder time for the mothers with young babies so babies when they are born, since they are born they need great care from their mothers. Um, you think that they um, will be better and you, the life will be better when they grow up. But as soon as they start to walk and run, the, there are more dangers around. And without having eyes upon them all the time, the, there may be accidents but you know in uh, soon time um, they will enter into nursery and primary school but anyways I believe the mothers with young children are 
the group who face the much hardships in church because um, they can't concentrate on the sermon as they are exhausted and they lack sleep. Um, what would you do if you are given a day or two days on your own? I heard one mother say um, she'd like to go far away, away from everybody, just uh, watch the ocean and you know sleep all day and just wants to rest all day and come back. I believe there are mothers who want, who wish uh, like her. You know, um, the church brethren uh, adores your little one, but the mother actually is having difficult moment every day. Um, and this time, this time for the mothers uh, may give the mother a uh, depression in terms of Christian life. Why? Uh, because of their hardships in daily life. I believe um, once upon a time when you were without a child, you were supplied um, with m much sermons, word of God and fellowship. And nobody says you anything, tells you anything, even if you stay all night having fellowship. But um, as you start to have a baby, one or two or even three, um, you start to lose uh, faith and you slowly give up on your faith life and just <clears throat> tells yourself, oh, this is it, or oh, maybe this is my Christian life for now. now. I may live a better Christian life later on. And you think it's normal to live like that, but that's not it. And I believe this time, through online fellowship, we can review our uh, Christian life, and hopefully it will help the mothers. So for a bit of a uh, bit more than half an hour I'd like to share one thing and one lesson um, I heard one story from someone I heard someone uh, while having fellowship um, <coughs> that some mothers are not really concentrating on the sermon even if it's broadcasted on a live nobody's listening to the sermon the reason for that is you know a big toddler is running around and he's not in control the mother starts to you know stop him but soon she just gives up because the children are not listening to her. Then the mothers start to talk about, you know, what formula you are using and what food you are giving to your baby and, you know, which nappy is good for the baby. So keep the mothers in the baby room, baby carrying room in church are spending the time just chatting rather than listening to the sermon. And when I heard that story, I felt so sad. and I felt sorry for the mothers because they are not getting enough mm, word of God. And I thought it would be harder for them to leave Christian life in such circumstance. And, you know, I just had fellowship with the high school group and they are also going through hardship hard time due to adolescence 
And same for the mothers with young babies. Um, after a while, uh, even if after overcoming this difficult time, um, you will have more time later on to live a better Christian life after enduring this period. So the main scripture today seems easy but in detail if you see it's a bit harder to understand. So verse 39 it says all these having obtained a good testimony through faith. So these people mean um, from the first verse uh, of chapter 11 from Abel, Enoch, Noah, Abram to Sarah. So these are the people of faith in the Old Testament. So this um, secret, the mystery of faith uh, was passed from Abel to Enoch and Noah and so on and they received good testimony um, through faith but did not receive the promise so we first need to um, know what is this testimony and what is the promise so this testimony means the uh, the fact that God is alive. Verse 2 it says for by it the elders obtained a good testimony. So verse 1 and 2 talks about the evidence and good testimony. So how the these people receive the evidence that God is alive uh, for example, Moses was told by God to put your hand in a, your bosom and his hand became leprous. And uh, he put it into his bosom again, then it became clean. And God told him, um, cast your rod on the ground. And when Moses followed, it became a serpent. And when he did that again, it became the rod again. So through this such uh, um, evidence, he, these people uh, received the evidence that God is alive and He is the Creator, but they did not receive the promise. Verse 13 of chapter 11, it says, These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off were assured of them embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. So they have good testimony but did not receive the promise. What is this promise? It is the Jesus Christ whose name is not mentioned in the Old Testament. So they see the shadow. Just like a man is behind the thick curtains you see, you know, something is, you know, moving behind the curtains, but you can't see it. So, Jesus Christ, his name is not mentioned, and um, his uh, substance was never revealed to them, to the saints in the Old Testament. So, likewise, they received the testimony, but did not receive the promise of Jesus Christ. Verse 40 again, God having provided something better for us, that they should not be made perfect apart from us. So the saints in the Old Testament, they received the evidence that God is alive but did not receive the promise. And despite this fact, this fact, these people still were faithful and that itself is amazing right if you list all the people in the old testament um moses is in the middle and the 
before Moses there was no book um no Bible. But despite that the people had obtained good evidence and this is amazing. What I want to share um today with you mothers is that you should not give excuse that because um you are having hardship because of your child that um it's um giving you an excuse not to live a good Christian life you must think again why because these saints in the old testament they lived in a poorer situation in a situ- circumstance in the environment that are harder for them to believe in God and Christ but for us we can listen to the sermon whenever and uh anywhere we want to because we can listen to it online on YouTube and even there are snippets um the sermons that have been edited by others for us to listen so we can never give an excuse that uh we didn't have enough time or source to listen to the word of god because there is abundant um words of god around us and let me give you an example of hana who amazes me of her faith because penina um provoked her every day and made her upset every moment but one day she got an answer from god and she bore samuel and when she bore samuel she gave a praise to god in samuel chapter 2 first samuel chapter 2 she gives a praise to god and her praise summarizes who god is but think about it she didn't live a she didn't have an environment where she could listen to the word of god like or study the word of god but despite that she gathered all the understanding about god and she could summarize her um knowledge of god so she had a different uh, attitude towards the word of god but for us how about us you know when we stretch out our arms and um have our ears we can always listen to the word of god and because of that we listen to it very comfortably like we are so relaxed when we listen to the word of god you know we are not do you listen to the word of god as if if you miss one word you will get lost on your way of faith life you no know, if you think like that you would you know take note of every word you are listening but we don't do it why because we have excuses like having a baby or um taking care of your husband your household or life you have so many excuses but we have to think about the saints in the old testament because they were in much poorer situation and poor environment but why was it that they had a such great faith Verse forty says, "God, having provided something better for us, that they should not be made perfect apart from us." 
let me explain it this way that we let me say my right hand is the Old Testament all the saints and the left hand is the saints of today so the people living in the Old Testament um, they are themselves they only see themselves that's why they are not they are incomplete without us they are incomplete but us on the other hand we see the complete thing because we see the Old Testament and the New Testament we have the scientific evidence and we are seeing the prophecies of Israel being fulfilled I gave a sermon on this last week in the Ottoman church you know, there are embassies of Israel uh, worldwide what they announced is that all the Jewish people must gather and come back to the land of Israel by um, 2030 this is the plan of Israel it may take longer than um, 2030 but we must ponder upon this let's go to Ezekiel chapter 39 Ezekiel chapter 39 verse 28 then they shall know that I am the Lord their God who sent them into captivity among the nations but also brought them back to their land and left none of them captive any longer so Ezekiel who wrote this didn't see this uh, prophecy being fulfilled and he died and nobody has seen this prophecy being fulfilled but this will be accomplished before the world ends and this time will surely come and according to the Bible it will be fulfilled during the year seven year tribulation so we will leave this world uh, not seeing this prophecy being fulfilled but we have nine years left until 2030 and this will be fulfilled during the years of seven year tribulation so looking at this we are seeing this prophecies are being fulfilled in our time we must be more awake than the saints in the Old Testament however we have so many excuses you know God you know how tired I am how exhausted I am and how busy I am there are excuses but we cannot say that when we look at the saints in the Old Testament let me give you a story of a sister she had uh, she has two little babies two little children but one day she wasn't staying in the children room but was listening to the sermon in the hall I wondered why she was there not looking at the kids in the baby room so she was coming in and out uh, so whenever the time was given she came into the hall to listen to the sermon and one day I saw her um, you know working in the kitchen in the church uh, while looking at a kid um, where she placed the, her kid in a basket I pitied the child at the same time I didn't know whether I should praise her or not 
I've never seen anyone like her because she was so focused on the sermon. She was so eager to listen to the word of God. She's such a great sister. She's still living a good Christian life until today. And in fact, she's in Cologne Church in Germany. I think most of you know her. But anyways, so although the mothers with children are having hardship in this difficult moment, you must um, be determined to, you know, um, to overcome such hardship no matter what. And must be determined to listen to the word of God. Why? Because you can have rest before the Lord when you meet the Lord. Um, I got a question from the mother's group leader. Uh, uh, someone asked this question uh, I know how to raise a child but in reality it's always difficult and I am always confused how to raise a kid so even from my own experience uh, it was it's hard to educate and raise my children but well, after the moment is past you feel the present is more difficult and as your child enters primary school it becomes more harder and after entering high school and university the problem is becomes more serious like you still worry for them even after they are married so i think education is a lifelong process and i don't think i will be able to testify that i raised my children well but one thing i want to share with the mothers today for the rest of the time is Taming children. I think um, parents of today are not really good at taming their children. You know, once uh, in your child's lifetime, a parent must tame and train their child. You know, as a parent, you love your child, but they might not always be um, loved by others in the society. And I remember a sister in Australia, when I visited the, the church in Australia, uh, we were in a restaurant and the sister put her two children on the high chairs and she gave them food to eat and she didn't care whether the babies were whinging or whining or you know dropping food on the floor she didn't care but she just uh, ate her food and the children themselves knew that the mother won't you know put them uh, like move them out of the chairs so they were sitting down still and just um, eating on their own 
know, for but for many mothers, they you know pity their children when they are making noises. You you know you hug them and you have them in your arms and show them movies with your smartphones. But that's not really education. You are not really taming your children. And <clears throat> on another time, they we were on a bus and these children were on the car seats. And because they knew that their mother won't take them out of their seats during the journey, um, they were just sleeping in the car seat, waking up and eating and then sleeping again in their car seats. The whole journey on the bus was a long hour journey. So that's how they were trained. So that's the, the training you should have with your children. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 29. Verse 15, Proverbs 29, verse 15, the second part. But a child left to himself brings shame to his mother. A child left to himself. What does this mean? It means... Um, just left to himself to behave. Verse 29, 21 He who pampers his servant from childhood will have him as a son in the end. This servant can be our flesh. So our flesh is like a servant who needs to be tamed. Apostle Paul also said, I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached myself, preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. So it's not easy to train your own flesh, your body, but another thing you need to uh, discipline is your child. You know, you can't always listen to your let. Uh, your children and let them have what they want all the time because they won't always be accepted in this society so no not no other nobody else like your child like you do so it is important to raise your child as the work of God and it's not a temporary process. You think as if you uh, you yell at them once they will listen to you, but that's not the case. As they grow up, as your child grows up, they get they are clever, and they will be grow up to be stronger than you, and they won't listen to you anymore. And they will grab you when you try to discipline them after they've grown up. So it, you should straighten a young a tree when the tree is young. Why? Because it's easier to straighten it when the tree is still young. When it becomes older and become thick, if you try to straighten it, it won't work. Likewise, you should educate and train your children when they are young. Your job as a parent is to ha make them have fear in God. After they have grown up, it's up to God to work on your children. So if you always listen to your children to do what they want to do, then you yourself are tamed by your child. You know, some children you know, always scream and they throw their tantrum 
it's all the time and are hard to control but it's you our job as a parent to train them when they are young let's go to proverbs chapter 19 proverbs chapter 19 verse 18 Chasten your son while there is hope, and do not set your heart on his destruction. Have you ever had a moment where you got mad at your child? A lot, right? There's a word that says, um, there's a phrase such as terrible twos. Nowadays in Korea, they say uh, children in certain age group, they make you want to bash them. Because pe kids nowadays, they watch YouTube and they um, have the internet. They, they are very clever and they speak very well. Uh, at first, when you see them speak very well, you you um, are surprised, you are amazed. But later on, they will um, give you headaches. In Hebrew saying, um, um, parent can never educate their child when you are um, upset, when you are angry. So you should never educate your child or train your child or discipline your child when you are mad. Um, even for me, my father, he was never angry at me, but he was still scary. So whenever I did something wrong, my father would tell me to bring a stick, bring a road. And, you know, he, my father could have a road himself and hit me but um, I think his method was to um, have a moment to calm himself down while I bring him a stick and when I bring the stick he would tell me to you know count uh, every time he hit me and I now when I think about it I think my father was very angry actually but he was never mad at me but he used the time to calm himself down no. when your child is grown up they will not think seriously about the road and it won't be hurtful for them anymore because they are strong uh, maybe it's not fit for this uh, European um, <clears throat> education environment but one thing I know is that you should never get angry when you discipline your child and uh, Proverbs also says a fool exposes all his feelings. So you should know that education and discipline is a lifelong process. It's like a carving a sculpture all your life. And once you lose your temper, you will break the whole sculpture. You should think like that. So when you are angry at your child you should tell your child to go away you should avoid that moment and have a moment on your own and calm yourself down or you should pray to God in that moment and discipline your child afterwards 
Uh, one thing I learned from the missionaries who have now passed away. Uh, I remember one missionary who had four children. Whenever he was giving a sermon, none of his children moved. So they would sit on the bosom of their mother. So they would uh, draw on a paper with a pen and would fall asleep and be awake and wait until their father's sermon ends. That's how they were trained. But nowadays, parents are giving excuse due to COVID-19, I won't go to church. Your children learn from you. They are listening to you. And if you tell them, oh, because of the nursery, you can't go to church today. They watch you. They listen to you. When you tell them that, oh, on Wednesday, you must go to church and listen to the sermon. They will get uh, be adapted. They know what to do since they are young. So you should let your child know what is the right thing to do. You should discern and you should decide what you should give up. Which thing you will you give up? Your Christian life or your good life for the flesh? So you should always um, act according to your words. Why? Because your children watch you. They will see whether your words matches with your action. And if it's not the case, then they will think of your words as lies. And they will confuse them in their Christian life. I know it's hard to, you know, always uh, apply your words into your life. And um, I heard from my wife that she when she uh, was going to Wednesday sermon, my daughter uh, would <coughs> sleep on her knees next to her mother on Wednesday sermon. And after the sermon ends, she would wake up and walk back to home with her mother. That's how she was trained. So likewise, we should um, tell our children what to do, how to live faithful life through your own life. I know it's a hard thing to do, but once you make up your heart to live rightly, then it becomes easy. Just like Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, 29 says, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. I know it's difficult for you, all mothers, but please overcome and endure this hard time with your faith because later on your children will become workers, precious workers such as like Samuel who later became prophets and testified the word of God.